Hey everybody, I wanted to talk about vertex covers and Koenig's theorem. So a vertex cover of a graph is a, is a subset of the vertices so that each edge is incident to at least one vertex in your subset. All right, so let's try to find a vertex cover on this graph. I have no claim that I'm, I'm small, finding the smallest possible vertex cover. But I could choose this vertex, which covers these edges. So I've sort of handled these edges. And then why don't I choose um, this vertex that also handles a lot of edges. I'm going to need um, one of these two in order to cover that edge. So why don't I just pick, um, I don't know, the bottom one. So that covers these edges. And then, oops, why don't I choose this vertex? And then I can choose this vertex. And then I can choose that vertex. All right. So I've, I've found a vertex cover. I have a covering by these six vertices. So that's my set V prime here. Questions about this? Let me tell you that uh, this is in some sense dual to the definition of a matching from before. Um, a matching of a graph is a set E prime of edges so that each edge is incident, sorry, so that each vertex is incident to at most one edge in E prime. Okay. So you sort of change from vertices to edges and you change from least to most and you get the definition of a matching that we had before. That's pretty confusing giving two definitions at once. So once again, a vertex cover is just a subset of the vertices so that every edge is incident to at least one of the vertices in your subset. And then furthermore, we say that a vertex cover is minimum if, if it has the fewest number of vertices among all vertex covers. Let me try one more time to see if I could get a smaller vertex cover. Um, I think we want that vertex covers these. And then to handle this edge, let me throw in this vertex. And then to handle these two edges, I do think we want to throw in this vertex, which furthermore gives us these. Before in this choice, I took the bottom vertex. Let's try the top this time. All right, and then to cover this edge, I need that vertex. And I'm gonna need at least two more vertices. Oh, wait, I already, already have this edge. Yeah, but I'm still gonna need at least two more vertices. Oh, I did worse, what's going on? Okay, let me try again. Okay, at this stage, let's throw in this vertex. And then let's throw in this vertex. Yeah, and I still need two more. So this is a vertex cover of size seven. That's not minimal. That's not a minimum covering be because before we had a vertex cover of size six. So our vertex cover of size six had a 
these. All right, so I'm guess I'm uh, I'm willing to guess that this is a minimum cover right here. I'm guessing that you can't do better than six vertices. Although, feel free to prove me wrong. Koenig's theorem is for bipartite graphs. Okay, so it's about minimum vertex covers in bipartite graphs. And what's really cool is this duality in the definition of minimum vertex cover, or sorry, this duality in the definition of vertex cover or matching shows up in the sizes of optimal ones. So in a bipartite graph, the size of a minimum vertex cover equals the size of a maximum matching. All right. Let's visualize this on this one example of a bipartite graph. On the right, I'll find a maximal matching. Um, you remember we considered this, this set here of five jobs, which only had four people who could fill any of them. So I'm going to start a maximal matching by, by finding edges matching those four people. All right, so matchings are of the edges. So I'm going to draw the edges in blue. OK, at this point, I can see that job W is not going to be matched. Right, there's no way I can match job W. I can keep going though, and I can match the other jobs V and Q. Right, so I sort of argued that job W can't be matched, and I've matched all the other jobs. So this is a maximum matching on the right. It's those edges drawn in blue. There's no other edges I can add that are not incident to a previously matched vertex. All right, on the left, so, well, let's record. What is the size of this matching? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six edges was the most I could find. Let's find a minimum vertex cover on the left. I'm gonna, again, start with those four people who were in the neighborhood of these five jobs, okay? And the reason why those are good, four good people to start with is because I know those four vertices cover, um, cover all these. Well, I should say they, those four vertices uh, cover all of these edges going to the five jobs. All right, so let's let's start drawing in also the edges that are covered. So C covers these edges. D covers these edges. E covers these edges and G covers these edges. Okay. So those four people cover a lot of edges, all the edges connecting to even one more job all the edges connecting to even five jobs. And then I can cover the remaining edges by looking at the um, two remaining jobs not in my original set. So Q covers these edges. And V covers these edges. And I've covered all my edges, except I forgot to mark one earlier that E had already covered. All right. So again, you can see that these are um, six vertices that cover po all the possible edges. And on the right, I had size six edges that were matched, and I couldn't extend those with any more matched edges. Questions?
So we'll prove this using the duality of linear programming um, on Thursday. There's combinatorial proofs of this theorem, which are simpler. But the nice thing about using duality is it, it shows how the duality of linear programming is connected to so many things. And also in that proof, it shows you how to compute these covers or these matchings. OK, let me end this video by proving Hall's theorem about edge matchings from Koenig's theorem. So in Hall's theorem, we have a bipartite graph whose uh, vertices are partitioned into two sets, x and y. I've drawn x on the left and y on the right. And all the edges go between those two sets. What do we need to prove for Hall's theorem? We need to prove that if the neighborhood of any subset of x is at least as large as the subset, then we can find a matching that contains every vertex in edge in X. So here, you know, it is possible to find a matching containing every vertex in X. Let's do it. Um, so I better match the bottom vertex of X here, and then I could match the top vertex of X there and the middle vertex of X. All right, how's our proof going to go? We're going to show that any vertex cover has size at least three in this example, size at least the size of x, which by Koenig's gives a matching of that size, a matching collection of edges of size at least three. And certainly, if you have three edges, you know, you're in a bipartite graph. So those edges, those edges have to connect to these three different vertices. All right. So we'll show you have a vertex cover of size at least, at least three, which by Koenig's says you ha um, have a matching of size three, which necessarily is those edges are incident to each vertex in X, because we only have three edges for three vertices in X. Whew. All right. So we want to show we have a cover, vertex cover, at least the size of X. For contradiction, pretend we have a vertex cover C. So C is the set of vertices in our cover with fewer fewer than three vertices. Okay, so maybe I'll pretend this was a vertex cover C. It's not, right? Not all of the edges are covered. Right, I only cover a couple of the edges, but just so I can illustrate the proof. Pretend you had a vertex cover with fewer vertices than the size of x, which here is 3. We're going to let k be the number of vertices in our cover, which are on the x side. So k is equal to 1 in this picture. And um, since I don't have as many as x, the size of x vertices in this cover, that means I have fewer and the size of x minus k vertices in y. Okay, so in this example, the size of x minus k is equal to 3 minus 1, which is 2. And I want fewer than three total vertices in my cover. So since I have one vertex on the x side, I want fewer than two vertices on the y side. So maybe I have one vertex on the y side. So what is the size of what are the number of vertices in X, but not in the cover? Well, that's, that's these vertices, okay? So the number of vertices in X, but not in the cover is just the size of X minus K, right? So that's three minus one. And by our assumption, if I consider the vertices in X minus the cover, And if I take their neighborhood,
then their neighborhood has to be um, no smaller. So where are these all connected? Those all connected here. So the neighborhood of x minus c is this orange set. Okay. And it has to be at least as large as x minus c. Okay. But you'll notice now that the neighborhood of x minus c has more vertices than the vertices on the left-hand side that are in our cover, right? So I have one vertex on the left-hand side that's not in the cover, but is in this neighborhood of x minus c. So consider this vertex, um, this bottom vertex on the left. This bottom vertex on the left is in the neighborhood of x minus c, but it's not in the cover. So that means I could extend it by an edge, you know, to, um, to connect it to some vertex, vertex of x minus c. So this vertex on the left was not in the cover. The vertex on the right, it's in x minus c, so it's not in the cover. So I found some edge that's not covered. And that's my contradiction. All right. So in summary, if a vertex cover had size smaller than the size of x, we found that it actually wasn't a cover. You know, we did a proof by contradiction. So any cover has to have size at least x, which means by Koenig's theorem, we get an, an edge matching that contains at least the size of x edges. Here, that would be three edges. And if you have three edges in a bipartite graph um, and you only have three vertices on the right-hand side, you'll have to have every vertex on the right-hand side incident uh, to one of those edges. So we have a, a matching of edges covering the right-hand side. Questions? All right, thanks so much.